Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 35 in our drawing series, Drawing Techniques for Beginners. We're getting quite, um, quite close to sort of almost wrapping this Converse trainer up now. I spent about an hour after the last video uh, just darkening a lot of these, uh, these shadows and just trying to bring the general value up. Uh, around here and as you can see we're, we're getting quite close there now so what I've been doing is I've been layering the 6B, 4B uh, and a little bit of the 2B as well. I've uh, started to bring out some of the details in the badge uh, and what I thought we'd work on today is we're going to work on some of these whiter areas and have a look at this uh, this trainer at the top here because I think this is going to bring us some valuable contrast which will then allow us to see whether we're uh, anywhere near uh, the right value with uh, with the rest of the boot. So without further ado, let's make sure that we've uh, freshened up our kneaded eraser. I've sharpened my pencils and um, I'm just gonna show you quickly actually, briefly now that um, I've not actually put any value into this area at the bottom uh, and I'm gonna just take my kneaded eraser and I'm just gonna show you actually how much of the graphite has actually started to move into that. So. Uh, I hope you can see that on, on the video there, but um, I'm actually taking an awful lot of the graphite away. And I just want to make sure that I do tidy this up because this sole of this trainer is actually very, very white. And it's important that you just start to remove this as we're going along because you don't want to get to the end of the drawing uh, and, and find that you've got so much value in there that it's, uh, it's, it's ingrained into the tooth of the paper. So I'm just removing that gently with the kneaded eraser. So I really would recommend removing that as as you go along. So I'm going to come in with the 2B pencil now and um, what we're going to start working on is is this dark patch. I'm going to start with the the black line or the trim of this trainer I guess that's what it is. Be careful you don't press too hard, I'm trying to get too much value down with this 2B initially because we don't want you to damage the tooth of the paper. Just getting that initial layer down, just getting into the, the lower regions of the tooth of the paper. It's been an awful lot of fun drawing this. What I've been working on is uh, just trying to develop the textures like we spoke about in the last lesson and possibly the lesson before was just really trying to pay attention to detail and having a look at where the material is. It's almost got a, a checkerboard in this area here. It's almost got a checkerboard effect. So just paying attention to that. What I've also been doing is I've been very conscious to try and start picking out some of the very dark areas, some of the, the very dark shadows within the, uh, within the material. And uh, I think it's starting now to get a very realistic look to it. One of the things that you have to be aware of when you're looking at your reference image is where are the darkest areas and where are the lightest areas, but also where are the contrasting textures as well. 
So where have we got a smooth surface? Where have we got a rough surface? Uh, particularly important when we're doing portraits. It's nice to have a complexion that's soft and maybe shiny, like on the baby portrait that we did. But then we're also going to have some very different textures in the hair. Sometimes you can pick a lovely reference image that's going to um, have some clothing on there. So I'm, I'm just going to work in this darker zone now. I'm just going to bring out the underside of that sole of the trainer. And again, that's one of those wonderful opportunities to create some realism. Again, just working with this 2B pencil and just taper stroking it in, not pressing too hard. Uh, it's been really brilliant seeing some of your work over on the group, so thank you so much for sharing that. We're almost at 3,000 members of the group, which is unbelievable. Now, when I started this project a few months ago, I didn't realise that we would... Uh, catering for nearly 3,000 people in such a short space of time. So thank you so much for making the group accessible for everybody and uh, a place where beginners feel comfortable. Uh, if you haven't already found the group, check us out. It's called Tutorial Tuesdays Beginners to Pro. Uh, you can find that on Facebook. Also make sure that you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications icon. Uh, that means that you will, you'll be notified whenever I do drop a new video. I really do appreciate all of the, the kind words and comments. I'm going to change pencils now. I'm going to come in with the uh, HB pencil now. I'm just going to work in this zone. I don't want it to be as dark as they, uh, the edge of the sole there. Uh, but yeah, I was just saying thank you so much for all the kind words and all the comments. It's been, um, it's been a real blast doing these tutorials. and. Uh, seeing some of you posting some of your work on other social media platforms as well, which has been fantastic. So if you are on Instagram, check me out at ArtisticN1K, same as the YouTube channel. And I will make sure to follow back. So I just need to get some value into this area here. Um, one of the key principles when we're learning to draw or learning to paint or whatever it is that we're whichever medium it is that we're learning or wanting to become better at is understand how light works. And this, this sounds relatively easy and a very simple idea, but basically the further away something is from the light source, the darker it gets. So although that we know that this rubber band on this trainer here is white, may have a little bit of mud or, or some dirt in there, but primarily this is white. The value that we're having to put on here is not a million miles away from the value that we've been using in the darker areas. Um, it's just that we understand that as the trainer bends away from our line of vision or away from the light source, it actually gets darker even if what we're looking at is white. And that is that is a principle that you, you have to keep telling yourself. It's so easy to... to uh, interpret something as being white and just go in and leave it a very very light value and what that does is it tells our brain something different to what we want it to be being told so i'm just coming up and having a look at where some of these values are so we've got some shaded areas in here and uh we've got an edge of a shoelace in there as well so i'm just going to make a hard edge there now we were talking last lesson about clean or hard edges when we've got two objects that are overlapping one another so in this instance we've got a shoelace overlapping and obscuring the view that i've got of the trainer behind i need to make a clean edge so i need to come right up to that and taper away from it that's going to give the person looking at our drawing a sense that what they're looking at is something in front of something else. If we're looking at something that's rounded, so this for example, we have what we call soft edges. Something that's rounded has a soft edge, which means there isn't a definite finish to the value. 
and a clean edge or a hard edge like we said in in this instance with the shoelace here we really want that to be a hard edge we need to give the viewer as many opportunities to perceive depth dimension and shape as we physically can or as we we possibly can so i can see within this shadowed area i've got some slightly darker tones but i, I probably can achieve that with my 2b pencil once i've started laying down some more value in there with this HB, but I'm just going to be aware of that. There are some, it almost looks stippled. And I've got another clean edge in here. It's been really good seeing some of the new, new, uh, new people, new members of the groups starting with some of the earlier lessons so what i would advise to you guys if you're new to drawing um, go ahead and have a look at the lessons in the playlist called tutorial tuesdays you can you can find that at the top of the youtube channel there's a section that says playlists and have a look at tutorial tuesdays beginner to pro that's all of the videos that i've done so far and uh, particularly pay attention to lessons one two one to six, I think it is, or one to five. And we go through the techniques of, of laying down these values and understanding what the pencils do and what stroke we want to be using to achieve this type of look. Uh, you'll also notice that I don't use any blending stumps. I don't use blending tools. I like to uh, produce the values simply with the pencil, the odd brush here and there with a soft, soft makeup brush, but uh, nothing too harsh. So I can see that this is further away from the light source than this. So this needs to be slightly darker and I'm just going to push the value with this HB pencil just a touch in there. So we have got just a hint of a pattern emerging. I've got a kind of zigzaggy pattern in the, the grooves of this trainer. But as I'm looking at those, I'm just still looking to find the areas that are slightly darker. Even within those grooves in the trainer, there's going to be areas that are slightly darker their indentations and there are also going to be areas that are slightly lighter and we're going to look at those later on with the kneaded eraser or the mono zero eraser but i'm just getting a a map for where they are at the moment i'm not too fussed and sometimes less is more sometimes i don't need to get every single detail in there So what I might do now is I might use my brush slightly just to brush some value into, into this area. Because what that then does is it gives me something to work with. Okay. So let's go with the 2B pencil now and let's just start to bring out some of this shaded area. And I'm going to work from the, the area that I know or I perceive as being the darkest area within this, this crevice. And that's always going to be the piece furthest away from the light. So I'm working from the shoelace as we can see it. And I'm just layering this 2B pencil down. Now what I'm also going to need to do in a second is I'm going to need to bring the value up on the, uh, the black stripe that we worked on here because I've only gone up to a 2B in there. So we still need to keep the contrast, but okay at the moment I've not lost where that stripe is going I'm 
Now I'm only pulling this pencil towards me, I'm not scribbling. I know it looks as though on the on the video itself as though I'm scribbling, I'm not actually moving this pencil away from me, I'm always pulling it towards me. That's called the tapered stroke. And it's what I find most accurate. So I'm just going to take a, a fraction of this highlight out in there. I'm just going to maintain my light areas and I'm also going to maintain my dark areas as I'm going along. It's really important. It's very easy to lose direction and lose where your light source is coming from or where things are shadowed. Shadows are very, very important for realism. That's why it's so important that you choose your reference images wisely. If you've got a reference image that's got strong preferably single light sourced shadows. It just gives you a, a brilliant opportunity to showcase your skills, and make something look realistic. So I'm just using a little bit of 2B up into this area now, just bringing some of that value and that shade down. So still definitely need some more value in this. Now what I can also do there is I can go back to my HB pencil. And the beauty of this technique, because I'm not bearing down too hard with any of my pencils, I'm certainly not getting as much value out of each pencil as I can with each stroke. It means that I can come back in with the, the grade above. So in this sense, I'm now using the HB pencil again. And you can see that I'm still getting value. But what I'm also doing is I'm getting a beautiful coverage of value of graphite. I'm getting a very rich tone. I'm losing this grainy look that you find with some drawings. What they've done is they've gone in with too soft a pencil initially. And that makes it very difficult then to remove. You're left with this sort of speckly mottled looking drawing which for me is not something that I'm looking for so you can actually see that I'm, I'm putting quite a lot of value in this this area here now even though we know this is white I'm going to take some of that value out with my eraser just to give a textured look to it but I'm not worrying about going too dark. It's, it's, it's almost every new artist's pit, biggest pitfall. I know certainly it was mine when I started. It took me years to, to get over the worry of going too dark. I'm going to come in with the 4B now. And I'm going to just work in this area, just trying to darken this stripe up the contrast for me is is everything and as I'm, as long as i'm maintaining the contrast and i'm protecting my highlights i'm building the realism up as i go and that, that there will be a point where i've where i reach a point and i say that's enough i can finish now And it's always surprising. It's never, it's never the session that you think it's going to be, or certainly not for me. Uh, we were having a discussion over on the group recently where we were, we were talking about when the drawing's actually finished, and you can go on for hours. There becomes a point when you have to say enough's enough. Okay, so I'm just going to brush in now a little bit more of that value with my soft. It's a it's a two and a half inch or a two inch brush. It's very soft. 
uh, a makeup brush would do. Okay, I'm gonna use the kneaded eraser for this so I can see that there are some highlighted areas in between those grooves and certainly some within this zigzagged tread I guess it's what you'd call it we've got light hitting places and shadowed areas and then we come out to a very bright area here so we we lose the edge of the shoe in this area here because the background is, is so white in comparison to the sole of the shoe. And I, I like that effect. I like the, the way that this just transitions out and we lose it. It kind of fades off to nothing. And again, this doesn't need to be perfect because this isn't a perfectly smooth, flat surface. There are lumps and bumps. Perhaps need a little bit more value now in just some carefully positioned areas on some of these grooves. Okay. So I can say I'm going to take my Mono Zero eraser now. So this is my retractable eraser. And I can just see within here that there are some of those zigzaggy lines that aren't dark there, lighter. And I'm just going to take those out. And the same with some of these slight zigzags. Pay as much attention to the details as you can. Okay, what I want to have a little look at now is this eyelet up there. So I'm going to come in with the 2B. Um, this is a shiny object and I, and I do want to do a project on shiny objects, but the key to the shiny objects is getting some of those very deep, dark, almost blacks in there but also contrasting that out with some very bright whites. So I'm just working in there. And there are some reflected shapes. There's almost a, a um, horseshoe shape that I can see up there. And I'm just going to try and replicate that. Got a very dark edge in there. And the whole area is ringed with a almost a shadow. And then with the Mono Zero razor again, I'm going to take out some value so that the center of it is really quite light. So what I probably need now in there is just some what we call mid-tones got my dark contrast in there with the, the 2B and now I just want a, a hint of value in some of the other areas and again it's just another one of those wonderful opportunities there too show a different texture and a different material and light reacts differently to different materials so we're we're showing our understanding of light now i can see i i need a little bit more value coming around the edge of this just coming away from it just to these eyelets are they're, they're put onto the material, I guess they're sort of pinned in or inserted in it, and it leaves an indentation. You can see that it's slightly sunken into the material. And I want to try and recreate that by just showing 
a value change going in towards the eyelet and we're going to get that all around it because we know that light affects things the same way the further away the darker okay I'm going to try and darken this shadow up a little bit more now with my 4B now remember to turn your paper so that we don't have the lines all running in the same direction again we just want this smooth coverage particularly if we're doing portraits. Now I'm working with the 4B, it would be a, an apt time to just work on some of the texture in there. So just looking for some of the slightly darker areas in there. Some of the shapes that that forms. Just trying to pay attention to that. And again, this inner edge here, which is towards the shoelace itself this harder edge that's going to be darker and this is quite a striking edge this is a very clean edge there on the shadowed area we've got big contrast between this and this and we have actually got a couple of those details within the shadow that I want to try and capture and this is the darkest edge within there I'm just going to clean this area up again now because I can see some of my graphite is moving around and I, and I want this background here to be clear of graphite just so that we have that same effect where it, it, it fades into nothing. I think that's a really, a really cool aspect of this reference image and it was it's one of the reasons why I chose this one because it's it's an element that we haven't had yet in any of our drawings. So just take a little bit more value out in specific areas just to liven that area up a little bit. I'm quite happy with this. So let's concentrate now. Let's let's see if we can get some realism with this uh, this eyelet here. So I'm going to take the mono zero rays and I'm just going to remove some of the graphite to begin with around the edge there don't need to be too careful with that because we are going to be adding more so again the same as what we spoke about up here we're going to we're going to just outline it with the i'm using the 2b here Paying attention not to press too hard. Still going to lay the, the value down in a series of strokes rather than just pressing on straight away with one big bold stroke and damaging the tooth of the paper. So then I can see that we have a shadowed area that comes up. And the edge of this is there. Let's brush that in slightly now. I'm definitely going to need to take some more value out now. I'm not entirely sure whether it's the shine that the white area or the dark that gives these types of objects the sense of realism. I guess it's a combination of both. I'm going to just darken up this center of this now, this hole. Just come around the edge slightly. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks quite nice. So, I think we have another one 
just to the to the right so again I'm going to just remove some of the value with my mono zero and then we're going to go with the 4B I'm going to just darken out the hole making sure that we've got a clean edge where the shoelace overlaps Perfect. So same same method we're going to outline. And then we're going to look for these shaded areas. This one is darker than the, the previous one because obviously the light source is, is not quite getting into this the same way it's further away from the light it's being almost covered with the shoelace so we haven't got as much of this white shining metal as we have on this one but we have still got a hint of it okay quite happy with that now I think we're sort of about half half an hour in again, which tends to be the the limit and the amount of time that I like to spend on these tutorials, just so that you're you're not having to spend hours doing them. So what I'm going to continue doing is just bringing in some of the details around this background trainer. I'm going to keep reinforcing this shadow using a selection of pencils ranging from the HB all the way up to the 4b maybe a little bit of the 6b in there and i'm uh, i'm going to see where that brings us so thank you so much once again for watching my tutorial um, i'm having a blast making these videos so don't be shy get hold of me over on facebook and uh, instagram make sure that you're posting your work over on the group uh, it's been lovely seeing some of your work over there and I really look forward to seeing how you get on with this lesson. I would say we're possibly two more lessons away from completing this which will be a, another, another project under our belt. I have to start thinking about what the next one's going to be. So thank you so much once again guys for your support and continuing to make the Facebook group and the YouTube channel grow. Um, I really do appreciate it, it makes a huge difference. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you do with this project. See you in the next video. Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button, follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.